While building or improving your mousetrap car, there are many characteristics that you need to pay attention to, but I've found that there are three critical elements that are the most important for the, a successful mousetrap car. Those involve the wheels and the way in which the wheels attach to an axle, the way in which the axle is arranged on the car and power is provided to it, and the way in which that force is taken from the mousetrap itself. And I think if you pay special attention to these areas, you will be more successful with the mousetrap car. Let's start with the wheels. Now, traditionally, students go straight for CDs because they're convenient. They're a fairly good size and uh, they're easy to get. Unfortunately, do you see how thin they are? They don't have a lot of grippy surface. If you want to increase the grippy surface and prevent it from sliding, you can put a, a balloon around the outside or rubber bands around the long parts to give it some grip. But CDs come with a difficulty is they have a very large hole in them. There's a way that you need to figure out a way of getting that hole so that you can put an axle on it. And that's the first thing we're going to look at. Now CDs can make great wheels, right? But you have to contend with this large hole that's in the middle. Now I believe, as a suggestion, I introduced these sink washers. There are these rubber washers that you can get in the plumbing section of hardware stores. What's interesting is they fit very, very well into the hole on the CD. Now, at this point, you can super glue or hot glue these washers right around here to ensure that the washer stays inside the CD. And at that point, you start to be able to insert an axle into the washer. And that means that there is no wobble when the axle runs. If your sink washer is too large for your axle, do you notice that it has some play and it will wobble on the axle? Actually, this is really important. If your, if your wheels wobble too much, you create friction between the axle and the wheel and you don't go as far. But you might choose that your wheels will spin without the axle moving. Now I put a couple dots on my axle right there so you can tell when the axle is moving and you can tell when the CD is moving. And currently this wheel is allowed to spin around an axle that doesn't rotate. Now you might want that but you want to fix the wobble. Don't allow your wheels to wobble. You might go, Mr. Fay, how can I do, how can I fix that? Well, you could buy something called threaded rod and put a nut on the end, pass it through your nut, your washer, and then put another nut here and pin it together. That would allow your wheel to spin without your axle spinning. The other alternative is you could get a washer that just barely fits so that your axle will fit in it. And once again, there are my dots and there's my CD. So as the axle spins, the wheel spins as well. This is really important for the wheel that you set your mousetrap on. You want this style of axle to washer arrangement when making the type of wheels that drive your car. If you take the other one, the axle spins, but the wheel doesn't, and you don't go anywhere. Now we've been talking about using CDs for wheels, but that's not the only source of wheels. You can use lots of things, like vinyl records, you can cut them out of cardboard, or if you're fairly clever and willing to destroy some toys, you might find some wheels that are pre-generated. Now you'll notice that this set of wheels, as I spin the axle, the wheel spins as well. And we could utilize this to transfer power from the mousetrap down to the ground so that our car moves forward. But we need to pay very special attention to the way in which we would attach a string to the axle in order to get it to move. Alright, before we talk about transferring power to the axle, 
Let's talk about how you get the axle attached to the body of your car. Now, if I take this axle and simply glue it to my car, I don't allow the axle to spin, which is something that I need it to do if I want it to transfer power to the wheels. Now, that's fine in the front if my wheels spin on the outside of the axle, but if this is pa transferring power to the wheels, it needs to spin freely. Now one solution that I've seen that's fairly good is using these little eye hooks to put your axle through. And if you get them small enough, the axle can spin freely, but there's not too much play in it. Now you're going to need two to ensure that the axle doesn't wobble. Once you have the axle mounted to your body, we need to be really concerned about the way in which we get our string attached to our axle. Now you'll notice that I've put a knot in this just around the axle. And if I move it over here next to the wheel, can you see that I can turn the wheel without the knot moving? Well, unfortunately that works backwards as well. That if the knot is moving, it doesn't necessarily turn the wheel. What you're looking for is you want to increase the amount of friction between the knot and the axle so that as the string unwinds, it forces the axle to unwind as well. There's a couple things you could do in order to fix this. You could take some super glue. You could take some super glue and attempt to glue the knot down to the axle. And that would be a, a mechanical bond that would ensure that the axle doesn't spin or, I'm sorry, that would ensure that the knot doesn't spin around the axle. There's another route. If you used sink washers to fix your axle to your wheel, you can use one or two more, pass a string through it, and then put it on your axle. What this does is ensure that the string is connected very well to the axle. And so, as you wind up your string, your axle is, con is forced to wind up or rotate as well. Okay? And so, as your mousetrap pulls on your string, your axle is forced to turn, which in turn turns your wheels. The last category that I'm going to talk about is how you get power from your mousetrap. Now if you really take a look at it very, very carefully, your mousetrap is a kind of lever. Right there it pivots. The spring supplies force right there, and you get force out of the deal here. And mousetraps supply a lot of force. But here's the thing. In fact, there's almost too much force. It's very hard for us to deal with all of that force. But if we learned anything, we can change the character of the lever to transfer force into distance. And that is critical in the mousetrap car. Now, I see a lot of students wanting to tie their string straight to this mouth end of the mousetrap. But could I point something out? If that is the case, then the farthest that your string can travel is from here to here, which is a grand total of about 10 centimeters. And if that means that 10 centimeters of string pulls out, your car can only travel 10 centimeters. This is a problem. But is there a way that we can modify our mousetrap to trade force for distance? And we do that by increasing the length of the lever arm. Take something that is very, very strong. Can I suggest you don't use pencils? They tend not to be strong enough. But a piece of wire, possibly a coat hanger, or these metal tubes, if you can find them, or possibly even a chopstick. If I could attach it to this side of the mousetrap, in effect, I've increased the length of my lever from here to the end of it. And that means not only does my string travel this far, it also travels this far. And in reality, now I can pull more strings from my mousetrap car. When it goes off, the, the end of my lever is going to travel from here all the way to here, giving me much more string to pull through my axle to turn a wheel to make my car go forward. Let's check out how it's done. If we take a look at the way in which our mousetrap is built, there's a spring 
and this wire that runs over the actual part, of the copper wire that uh, we get our force from. Well, let's take this wire off of our lever so that we can modify it. If you take a screwdriver, you can shift the wire so that it's on the other side of the copper, and that means that, hey, your lever arm is free now. Now, if you take a look at an example, this student has taken these things called zip ties and tied a stick to the wire, to the copper wire. I could take a chopstick and possibly apply some crazy glue in between the two of them and wrap it up with string or wire. Just the idea is that you want the stick to be bound to that copper arm very, very, very well, in effect, lengthening the arm of your uh, mouse trap. Once that is done, what's cool is you can take this wire and put it over both your copper wire and your new arm, and they work together then, transferring power very, very well. Once you have a new arm on your mouse trap, you can choose to either drill a hole through that stick in order to thread your string or tie a knot onto your new stick at various places. And that allows you to dictate how much string actually gets pulled through your mouse trap. If you're running the accuracy experiment, this might be of value to you. So, I've discussed three main criteria that I think are very important in mouse traps, but I have a couple more observations. For example, the longer that your car is, the more stable it tends to be and the straighter it runs. I see lots of students wanting to build a car the length of a mouse trap, which is easy, but it's not very stable and it tends to turn very, very quickly. If you make a very long car, that car runs smoother. In addition, small wheels might be easy to work with, but the bigger your wheels, the smoother your car runs. Now we talked about how to improve grippiness of wheels by adding balloons or rubber bands, or you can simply make the wheels very, very wide, and so there's a lot of stuff touching the ground as they move forward. If you notice that your car spins out, in other words, your axle spins and your wheel spins, but your car doesn't move, you might want to increase your grip. And then finally, this is kind of not a technical issue, but you need to build your car so it is very, very sturdy. The idea here is that you test it over and over and over again so that you know how that your car is going to run each and every time. This is kind of a reliability issue. If your car is very, very flexible and not very sturdy, you can break it each individual time that you run it. But I would suggest that you should run your car many times and tweak it or change little details to ensure that you know exactly what's going to happen. And so in conclusion, I'd like to say that the mousetrap car, while being a technical challenge, is meant more to build resiliency. And you know what? You are going to fail. That is all right. The question is, do you get back up? Do you try again? That's what I want to teach you. Good luck. See you on the track.